For the last 10 to 15 years in Scotland, we've been trying to change things in terms of how we deliver care. Still, in 2017, I have large numbers of patients passing through my department who don't need to be there. We did a study about three years ago looking at how could we support care of children in more remote areas. If children presented to a remote rural general hospital, and whereas they would normally have ferried them off to Inverness or somewhere else in a, on a four or five hour journey, they were able to call NHS 24, NHS Direct here, and then they would be patched through by video conferencing to a paediatric emergency medicine specialist. It increased the quality of care in 33% of cases, and that was a minimum number, and uh, avoided transfer in about 25% of cases. This trial was, was sort of our test bed for using the same idea of rapid access to uh, clinical support for all, everybody. So then we thought, well, what do we want? We really want to scale this up. And the problem is we could actually reduce large numbers of patients coming if we could have a system whereby patients could directly video consult with clinicians. Two years ago, yeah, Chris, you contacted me and you wanted to show us this, this new platform you had that would allow video conference to occur using Google Chrome, and that's what we're going to talk about, what happened after that. HealthRect Australia is um, government-owned. It's sort of like an HS24 bit of NHS 24, bit of NHS uh, Direct. We started in, in uh, 2014 to add video call access to HealthRex's own services. So um, a video call to a nurse instead of a telephone call. In 2015, we're off to roll that out and we actually had our own Vanguard type um, projects, exemplar program that we called it in 2015 with 10 sort of healthcare settings and that's now been expanded across Victoria, New South Wales uh, and uh, Western Australia in, in, a, in a wide range uh, of settings. So three factors played a really big part in our design thinking. The telephone is a benchmark uh, for ease of use, access, ubiquity, cost. We had to support incoming unplanned episodes of care, so we don't know where people are coming from. So install, you know, this is three o'clock in the morning, sick kid, you can't ask them to install stuff, mess around with the technology, plug things in, have echo cancelling speaker boxes, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and the need to be seen by one of any number of health professionals. And we focused on three layers. So the service operation about resourcing and um, you know, video call access design, obviously the legal financial uh, issues, um, the, the, you know, what's different in a video call in this particular discipline compared to seeing someone physically. Management issues are really around how you get the right people in the right web browser nowadays at the right time with the right information in the right way, securely, privately. Um, all those sorts of things, and then what happens when you hit go, which is the video technology. Now, video technology is freely available in a web browser, um, and, uh, and our focus is really on those two management service operation areas. What we've needed to focus on is a whole platform, which includes all of the materials and resources to support adoption through the thinking about it, through the um, preparation stages, the discovery, the setup phases, the using phases, the evaluation phases, which are all different in different healthcare settings and, and contexts. And then we have this management layer software, which we write ourselves, which, as I say, manages all the waiting areas, and we'll have a quick look at that. We have these 13 or so principles. One of them is to replicate the way that people access healthcare today. Familiar workflows for clinicians, they just go to their online waiting area. Familiar workflows for patients, they're just directed in their outpatients letter to the front door on the hospital website, as opposed to um, you know, walking through a physical front door. And from there on, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same experience, except you're online. Uh, so you come and start your call. Uh, so we collect, uh, again, customizable per area, whether you, what information you collect, whether it's mandatory or not. Some of our services are anonymous. This, importantly, this information is only to identify the patients that are in the waiting area. There's no patient identifiable information stored in the system whatsoever. Someone and should be with you That's surely. really it from a patient's perspective. So um, we can't do much about wait times. So I've arrived Please at my uh, appointment and, and I might and be we'll sitting here for you know, you sort of half an hour while the clinician's running late, but I'm at home or I'm working. You know, I'm listening to the um, whole music. I'm getting messages on the screen that are customised from the service, uh, etc. I will log in as a service provider. From my dashboard, uh, I can see how many people are in the service waiting areas that I'm, I've got access to. I've got access to three. Um, there's, you can set service levels around time to answer and all that sort of stuff. Uh, when, when patients come in, I've got a text and a ding, and you can set various notifications to let you people know people are in your waiting area. Uh, so uh, 
better go and answer Hazel. But Hazel, importantly, is sitting in her own private video room. You can see who Hazel's been seen before. You, she could have been transferred from another service. Uh, there's lots of details I don't have time to go through now. Uh, but the clinician essentially has seen the note. Uh, my next appointment's via video goes to their online waiting area, which is, can be built into the patient administration system or the, or the uh, EMR or whatever it might be, um, and then just joins that patient and proceeds with the consultation. So, hello, Hazel. Hello, greetings from sunny Edinburgh. <laughs> so we use this uh, all the time for our own case conferencing. You can have up to four to six people in there without any sort of central infrastructure. Um, one of the cool things compared to a WebEx or GoToMeeting is that everybody can share all the time. So four people can all be sharing. You don't have to hand over moderator or whatever. Thank you very much.